another edition of the UTPA Men's Basketball Show, our season premiere for 2014-15. My name is Jonah Goldberg. This is the one and only Dan Hipsher, our very own head coach, who's got the Bronx off to their first 2-0 start since the 2007-08 season, no small thing, with wins over Wayland Baptist and uh, UTSA as well. And uh, Coach, uh, you got to like what you're seeing out of your team so far. Well, at times, uh, we have a lot of growth uh, but it's nice to grow under winning circumstances. You know, I just showed the kids a lot of film uh, a few minutes ago and just made a comment that, you know, understand you're fortunate uh, because the, the mistakes and the things we're going to watch uh, as it continues throughout the season, uh, you're going to have problems. But right now it's fixable after winning, which is really a nice thing. And you started off with, you know, you faced a bunch of different kinds of teams. You talked about a little after the Wayland Baptist game about, you know, even you think back to your exhibition game, how uh, every team you face is a little different, and that really helps prepare you for what you're going to see down the road. Yeah, our, our uh, first game was uh, uh, Texas A&M International, and uh, they were extremely big and physical. Had two, uh, 24, a 24, and a 28-year-old post guys, all 260, you know, and, they beat us up a little inside and got physical with us on the perimeter. And then the next game, Wayland Baptist, which, you know, was another. Both both these teams were postseason tournament teams last year. So even though they're a division lower, they're they're quality teams and they know how to play and win. Well, Wayland came in with nothing but finesse. You know, spread you out, drive you, shoot the ball from the perimeter. So two different preps, which were really good for us going into the season. And then we got a combination of that, I'd say, in the UT San Antonio game. They've got a good perimeter game and then also had the seven-foot kid inside with the 6'9 uh, kid back off injury from uh, uh, Australia. So uh, good blends thus far, and uh, every team presents a different challenge. And uh, UTSA, I mean, that really got you into a bit of a dogfight where it was just constantly back and forth. You'd go stretches with uh, different teams going on runs. And at the very end, Shaq Vogus stepped up, hit a couple of threes, and that was the game. Well, it was interesting. Their, their radio guy interviewed me before the game, and we were talking about, you know, that we've got to get better defensively. And he goes, well, we do too. And he goes, this game's <laughs> going to be 100 to 95. And we were laughing, you know, and I said, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all. And then really neither team performed well offensively and neither team, you know, shot exceptionally well, finished layups around the rim exceptionally well. Both teams had turnovers that uh, really weren't forced. And, uh, but, but San Antonio gets into a lot of containment press, I call it, where it's not forcing action, it's really slowing action. You know, it, they stall you to get across midcourt, takes you seven, eight, nine seconds, works your shot clock. And so it slowed the game down a lot. And, and, uh, it, it was interesting because both teams had been scoring at a pretty good clip. In slowing you down, what does that change on your offense? Well, it, it doesn't change you offensively, but it, it just reduces the number of possessions in the game. Uh, uh, it's nice to be able to play motion offense and not have to reset your, your play and then run out of shot clock. I mean, we never ran out of clock, but it just, it just cuts the possessions down because every time you know, you're entering a ball or coming up there, they're, they're trying to eat some time off the clock on you, so it just cuts it down. But offensively, we try to continue to do the same things, just didn't do them very well. Well, you get the win over a Conference USA squad, and I immediately got a text from a buddy of mine in San Francisco who said, wow, congrats on the win over UTSA. That's huge. And you know, that, now it's two years in a row you've gone up there to their place and beating. Well, yeah, uh, didn't take advantage of that last year when we came back here and played Portland. They got us here. but. You know, beating Conference USA, I mean, that, that's a pretty good thing for us and our league and, and uh, everything involved, and people do get excited about it. And, you know, we had opportunities, Jonah, with six, seven, eight-point leads in the second half and never really took them out like we could have. We make a couple mistakes and, you know, uh, go down and give them a bucket. But uh, the game ended up a point, but, but, you know, we had a comfortable margin three or four times in the first half or second half, just couldn't continue it. Is there anything that you can specifically work on this week to try and uh, finish against uh, your next couple of opponents? Well, um, that would be mostly, again, uh, valuing the ball, which you talked about, you know, the turnovers, and uh, uh, a little bit better job. We're, we're struggling a little bit on the backboard. Uh, we've got to clear our rebounds a little bit better. 
And then offensively, uh, better decision making and getting rid of some of the nerves on some of the quality shots that we missed. Well, one player who was absolutely bonkers for you in both games, Janari Josar, picked up a couple of double doubles. I mean, he was 17 and 18 with six blocks against UTSA. I haven't had a kid since I was in Division Three get 18 rebounds in a game, so uh, that's 25 years ago, and that's uh, that's an impressive number. It, it also kind of showed the amount of misses that were available on the night, <laughs> but uh, but uh, he was going and getting them, and that was uh, quite an effort. And uh, you know the job he's done on the backboard the last two games for us. Uh, 13 and 17. I look in the book and he's averaging 15-5 a game off the board and I'm like that's got to be leading the country right now if we could get the stats in quick. Uh, I don't think they determine it. What do they take about 10 games before they start publishing yeah. national stats but uh, still impressive and a uh, great thing to see and you know getting us extra possessions. He had five offensive rebounds I think the last game and then the game before he had four so you know that's nine more possessions and uh, that helps a lot. And here's a guy who you get him as a transfer from Ole Miss uh, in the offseason, and he's come in and, you know, he, he played a few games for Ole Miss last year, but he's, he already has more stats than he had last year in terms of total uh, numbers, and he's just come in and been amazing. Well, opportunity can present great things for kids at times, and the, the guy who helped me with him, Sergio Rocco, who had worked at uh, Ole Miss, and, and uh, he called me, he said, hey, uh, my boy's playing good. I go, yeah, very, very well. And he goes, I told you he could rebound. I told you. And the style of play is different. The motion, the movement without the ball, he's really good at. He can make a shot. He can slice to the rim. And then his offensive rebounding gets opened up because he's coming from all over the floor. So excited for him, excited for us. And, uh, you know, thank God we were able to get him late because he's a major contributor right now. It's really one of the great things you've been able to do uh, in your time here at you know, which is only a year and a half mm -hmm. now, uh, in getting some of these transfer student athletes who've really come in and made an impact. You know, obviously Joe Sarr, I mean, you look at a guy like Shaquille Boga, you know, not only what he did last year and Javon Farrell, what he did right. last year, but now Boga, you know, he steps right in and drops 16 and he hits the, the game winning shot. And then, uh, you know, Sean Noriega coming back from injury. And I know he's still working his way back, but I mean, you pick up one of the best three point shooters from the Big East. and. Uh, it's such a quick way to infuse talent into your team. You've done a great job of that. Well, it was uh, thanks, but uh, it, it was uh, a need. You know, we needed an infusion of talent, and thank God we were able to find some of these guys through uh, either my connections or Andy's connections or, you know, uh, uh, Jay and Willie and different guys helping us, you know, run into to these kids. And, and, uh, and, and I think the thing that – that people feel comfortable with us is that we're going to treat them the right way and coach them and uh, give them opportunity that maybe they weren't getting at the other place. So uh, they've been really good additions for us and have helped us a lot. Yeah, you know, Noriega, I, I was, I've been wondering how long it'll take him to come back when you haven't played in 23 months of real game speed. And, you know, that second half against Wayland Baptist when he started draining those threes and one deeper than the next, one with a hand in his face, mm -hmm. uh, you can see what he what he can be. And it, it's so tantalizing that you really hope that he's able to get back to full speed quickly. He still has pain in his foot, which is unfortunate, and it keeps us from getting him back full go. We've never been able to work him uh, day to day to get him back to game speed. So when you throw him in games, he you know, he's he's – been a 50 60 percent guy in practice and when you're a primary scorer and cutter that's hard to get into the flow of things if you haven't been treated that way in practice so hopefully we can find some alternative methods to give him a little more pain, pain relief and find a way for him to to get back to we you know the point where we know we can be and not just looking at those flashes like you saw where he had about eight nine minutes there that were just ridiculous when he gets it going it's a lot of fun and you were seeing, and when you're staring out there instead of seeing Wayland Baptist, you're seeing Villanova in the 2011 Big East Exactly, <laughs> when he's just out there killing it. And uh, he can do that, and, you know, it's frustrating for him to have to fight through this. And, and, uh, but, you know, again, we'll, we'll just keep grinding and hope we find a way where it gets a little more comfortable for him. Brought in some, I mean, plenty of strong newcomers so far, and Dan Kamasa has uh, stepped in right into the, into the middle down low, and he's done a real nice job. Well, he has. He, he struggled the first night, uh, foul trouble and, and nervousness, but uh, that's part of being a freshman. And then 
I thought he vastly improved in the San Antonio game. I think he had seven, eight rebounds and ten points and uh, didn't turn the ball over, you know, did a good job, blocked a couple shots. So, uh, again, it, it, it's a process for all these guys, but he's, he's uh, really and, – and I've told him, unfortunately and fortunately, you have to grow up out there, okay? Like, you don't get to walk in behind a veteran and maybe slowly learn. You're, you're going to get thrown to the wolves a little bit, so you better, you better crank it up. And what he's helped to bring and some of these other newcomers have also helped to bring is – is it the size and the block shots. You know, I see the 12 blocks against UTSA. I don't remember seeing such great block numbers uh, in recent years. I think I was on the season last year. Maybe we had 12. <laughs> but, you know, again, the influx of height and length, uh, we get six out of, out of uh, Jasari and, what, three or four, three out of Dan or two out of Dan. And then Hines has always been a guy that can get one or two, too. So, it was good to see and, and uh, at least making it a little tougher around the basket for people to put it in. You mentioned Hines. You don't have much in the way of returning players, but uh, you know, with, with the exception of maybe the first half against Wayland Baptist, you know, Hines has really uh, brought in what you needed out there. Shaq is our best uh, forward defender, uh, best athlete, uh, should be a guy that shoots you know, 55, 60% from the field, a great driver. Uh, He's six for 15, but he'll he'll well tell you uh, that first the night against Santa Fe, he could have been 10 for 15. He didn't finish at the basket like he normally would, but he's playing very well. He understands how to space, cut, move, screen, and and it's a a good situation offensively and defensively for him because he brings a lot to the table. Other players who we've seen, uh, you know, I look at the that first home game and what everybody had a chance to see. Mo McDonald was a guy who really stood out to me in that game. Uh, you know, a guy who came in and, you know, didn't play last year as a freshman coming out of IMG Academy, but now he comes in and, you know, his first game, he doesn't miss a shot. He scores 14 points. He was a driving force for us in that game, to be honest. You know, if you don't get that kind of performance out of him, you know, do we win? So he did a great job, and I was really proud of him. And, you know, he has evolved greatly. Last year, he struggled just to practice. And then this year, he's a great practice contributor and now slowly evolving into to having play, playing in games and producing. Had a great game against Wayland Baptist. And then, you know, uh, not a surprise to go up to San Antonio, be a little nervous, and not play the way that, that he has played in the past. So, you know, it, it's going to be hit or miss a little while for him, but I'm seeing things out of him that give him a real opportunity to contribute a lot. He, he's got a great kid with a great motor, and and uh, the sky's up. You know, heck, he, he can he can he can play. And you, you won't find too many people more athletic than he is. No, he's extremely fast, and and when he learns how to harness that properly, offensively and defensively, he could be special defensively. Uh, he's so quick and athletic, and he really helps our transition game. He he gets us going. Uh, Andreas Bigham, you know, he had two of those 12 blocks at UTSA, and then you look back to the Wayland Baptist, scored 11 points on uh, four of eight shooting, and gives you a little more size off the bench. Yeah, he does. He's playing a little out of position with Equinibay being out right now with the injury, and he's having to play more at the basket than, than he probably should. But, but, you know, he did a great job. Again, a big impact on winning in a Wayland Baptist game, either through his screening or – you know, people dropping off layups and scoring at the basket and a couple offensive rebounds. He, he was a big factor in that game. But, again, went to San Antonio, had a little more of a struggle, but Dan was better. So nice to have that going on, too, where other guys pick up other people. Some of the new guards, uh, Everett Osborne, Isaiah Hobbs, who have also gotten a little playing time. What have you thought of them so far? Well, Everett was really, really good in the preseason and the scrimmages and the ex and, and, you know, he struggled here since the games have started. But... Hopefully that's just a, a little bump in the road with getting used to uh, uh, the nerves and everything that's going on. Plus he had to play a little more out of position. He's not a really a point guard. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, And then uh, Hobbs is just getting, the, as I said at the thing, getting the fresh out of the man. He, he just got to get him sped up. He, he has as much talent as anybody in the program, and he needs to be a real contributor for this program to be right. He's one guy that can play you know, the, the one to the three and play them all well. Well, next up is uh, Texas A&M Kingsville. Uh, that's Saturday at 7 p.m. What can you tell us about them? Don't know a lot about them yet. Uh, kind of been covering our game with San Antonio and, and working on that. I've, I've watched them. they got a lot of new faces. Johnny Estelle, great guy, new coach. 
Uh, I think he brought an influx of talent. Uh, watching him briefly on film, they try to spread the floor. I, they're more of a Wayland Baptist spread the floor drive and, and skill you than they would be a beat you up team like uh, International and, and San Antonio was. So uh, it would be a good challenge for us and they get excited about it. It's good for our kids right up the road here and then we get ready to head out to Utah. And I noticed uh, at the end of practice today at a game of knockout going on. Good way for everybody to loosen up a little? We'll loosen up and get some shooting in. And uh, I, I was in prepping a film and Andy got him going uh, to the old camp games. <laughs> <laughs> Bronx are back home Saturday at 7 p.m. against Texas A&M Kingsville. For tickets and more information, you can visit utpabronx.com. He's Dan Hipsher. He's the head coach of the UTPA men's basketball team. My name's Jonah Goldberg. We'll be back with you next week and every week throughout the season right here on utpabronx.com.